a router is used to connect computers to other networks. Routers come in several forms. Your Soho router, those four port or eight port devices that are used in homes and small offices that are mainly used to connect to the internet. Also, in bigger companies, those black box devices, such as Cisco routers, and they allow for more ports, 24, 48, 96. And even servers, if a server is equipped with multiple network adapters and the proper software, then that can act as a router as well. Now the router can be used as a connection to the internet, as we said with the Soho router, or on the LAN or WAN. It could connect to other routers and other portions of the network or other networks within your company. The device routes or sends packets from one location to another. So you have your packets of data that are sent from the computer out through the network, through the router. It routes the packets to a particular destination, anywhere in the world, really. And it does this based on the IP addresses of other routers. And that's what's important here. You have to understand that the routers all get an IP address, and usually this will be a static IP address. Let's illustrate this. Here we have an illustration of a network and here we have a switch with three computers connected to it. We have a desktop computer, a laptop, and a server. It doesn't really matter. They're all part of the LAN, the local area network, connected to this switch. And then the switch has a connection to the router. The router then connects out to the internet, which is often depicted as a cloud. And then we have servers out on the internet. And it doesn't really matter exactly what they are or where they are except for we want to know the IP address. That's what's important. So if you look here at our router, this is allowing all these computers access through the internet to the servers. Here, we have a local area network IP address, 10.0.0.1. That's the router's local address or ethernet address. And that is also considered the gateway address. If you configure TCP IP on these computers, you'll set up the gateway address as 10.0.0.1. But the router has another IP address. This is a multi-homed device. It has two network adapters, one for the ethernet to the LAN and one which is serial out to the internet. And that serial connection is using a public IP address, 207.172.15.50. That's a visible IP address on the internet. People out on the internet can see that IP address. And this router can see other computers on the internet as well. For example, these computers here, 208.96.234.193 and .194. These are two servers at some company that this router can make a connection to. And it doesn't really matter what they are exactly, but they need to be public IP addresses that the router can see. So this is an example of the IP address structure. And what happens is the router takes an all the information, all the data from these computers and kind of rewraps it. Instead of the information being sent on the 10 network, once it goes through the router, it gets changed to a public IP address. Let's take a look at uh, one of our Soho routers that I have in the lab here. Here's an AC1750 Soho four port router, and it also acts as a wireless access point, And it has the LAN and WAN connections that we just described. Here's the local area network connection, and its IP address is 192.168.0.1. And that's the uh, default for a TP-Link device, 192.168.0.1. That's a private IP address. And then all the computers will be automatically given IP addresses on this network. For example, 192.168.0.100 and .101 and so on. That's the local area connection. That allows all the computers on my little lab here to talk to each other. But it also enables a connection out to the internet, and it does that through the WAN connection, the wide area network connection. But uh, the WAN address is 64.121.138.225. So that is the wide area network connection that allows us access to any server or any other computer around the world. And you can see the 
device has a different subnet mask and gateway and DNS servers that are out on the internet at my ISP, at the internet service provider, 208.59.247.45 and .46. Also notice that the WAN connection is a dynamic IP. I get that IP address from the internet service provider. And again, I'll probably change that at the end of this, these uh, videos. But the local area connection is a static connection. That is the default address. You can change it if you want, but normally you would manually input that and leave it as that IP address and have it act as a static address. Keep in mind, this address acts as the gateway address for your client computers. So if you have a client who is 192.168.0.100, it will use this IP address as the gateway address. So that's just a quick example of the LAN and WAN connections on a basic Soho router. Okay, here's another diagram of a network. This time we have two local area networks and they're in different geographical areas. Let's say we have a company with two offices in two different states or two different countries. Well, here we have LAN 29, and we could say this is in New York City. And over here, we have LAN 30, and we could say that's in Los Angeles, just as an example. LAN 29 uses an internal IP network of 172.29.0.0. The Los Angeles LAN, LAN 30, uses an IP network 172.30.0.0. And you could use whatever you want internally because they're private IPs. You just want to make sure that they're different, that this one is different from this one and any other networks that you might have. But then you want to connect them. You know, we have these computers connected to a switch here. We have these computers connected to a switch here. We want to connect them through the internet. So we install a router at each location. The router in the LAN 29 location has two addresses the Ethernet address, which is on the same IP network as the LAN, 172.29.250.200, and a serial address, which is a public address which can be seen by the internet. And that's 65.43.18.1, just as an example. The other LAN, LAN 30, that has a router with two addresses, same type of thing, Ethernet address on the same IP network, 172.30.250.200, and a serial address, which is seen on the internet, it's public, 65.43.18.2. So these two addresses, very similar, just the last digit is one different, so they will be able to see each other on the internet and forward packets from each network through the internet. And we just see a T1 connection here. That's just the type of network connection, uh, which we'll talk more about later. But that's basically how the router is going to work. The router is going to take that information from one LAN, send it across the internet to another router. That's always what happens to another router first, and then it gets to its final destination, whatever computer that is. So all this that's happening here, this Ethernet address, to serial address translation is just that. It's known as network address translation or NAT. And so you want to know that for the exam. It's translating, it's taking these packets of information which are based on this IP network number and converting them over, translating them to this network number over here. Then when they go to this router, it gets converted or translated again from this network number to this one. And then finally to the final destination. Every router is known as a hop. So when you send information, if you send information from this computer to here, it goes hop, hop, hop. That's a three hop transmission right there. And quite often there's way more hops. If you wanna see how many hops it takes to get to a particular uh, server or domain name, use the tracert command. But anyways, there's a little bit about routers, uh, a little basic description of how they work. Uh, Take a look at your router, if you have one. If you have a basic Soho router, uh, log into it within your browser and take a look at the LAN and the WAN connections. Make a comparison of those. Draw it out on paper. See how it all works. Check out your own network. And that's it for this sub-lesson.